You are looking live right now at election headquarters for Eric Adams in New York City. He, of course, is the front runner, the Democrat, and likely next mayor of the great city of New York. We'll have a crew at the headquarters, and we will check in with them in just a moment. As you can see, they have not yet started to gather, but it is not expected to be a nail-biter in New York. Uh, he leads, I believe, uh, Curtis Sliwa there by several double digits. Welcome back to our vote, our right, BNC special coverage of the 2021 election. So far this year, 19 states have passed 33 restrictive voting laws. Most of those laws, of course, make it harder for black and brown people to vote. And at the same time, there has been a concerted effort in states such as Texas and Georgia and Michi Mich Michigan and others to dilute the power of the black vote, their legislative weapon of choice, redistricting or gerrymandering. Charles Blow is a New York Times columnist and, of course, host of Prime here on BNC. And, Charles, it appears really that Republicans have abandoned any thoughts of, of actually competing in the arena of good ideas and policy. Right. So they've been unleashed to do it, right? This is not something that is new to the Republican Party. In fact, you know, on the gerrymandering front, both parties have been guilty of this, not to the same degree. Republicans have been more guilty of it and have been sued for over it more times. But this idea of protecting the incumbents at the expense of, of people who are just getting into politics, just beginning to run, is a, has a long history in American politics and how districts are drawn. But what this is doing is really trying to re resurrect Jim Crow, like a Jim Crow 2.0, which a lot of people have used that phrase. That, that, that phrase is actually very, very apropos. You know, the, the Jim Crow did not start all at once in one burst, one state called the Constitutional Convention. It was Mississippi first, then it was South Carolina, and slowly, year after year, southern state after southern state called Constitutional Conventions and basically copied each other, copied the states before them to enact, so basically taking the exact same measures and writing them into their constitutions, literacy tests, poll taxes and what have you. And that's how, uh, that's how Jim Crow was erected the first time. And it was erected for many of the same reasons that it's being erected now, which was all of a sudden after the Civil War, you saw this explosion. Uh, you know, also, the, the ratification of the 14th and 15th Amendment allowed black people to be able to vote. And all of a sudden, these white bastions were no longer white power bastions because black people in many cases were the majority of the people in those states or they were very close to it. And all of a sudden, they freaked out and they wanted to protect their power. That is not dissimilar from what is happening now. You see a massive in, uh, a re reverse migration of black people into Georgia, you know, which means that, that the black population in that state has doubled in the last 30 years, from 1.7 million uh, people in 1990 to now 3.4 plus million black people in that state. And that is why you can look across that map and see where this is happening. It is happening in Texas, where the Hispanic population in Houston, has right. exploded. It is happening in Arizona, where the Hispanic population has exploded. And so you see an attack, not just on black people, but on anything that would threaten white power. Charles, I keep hearing people, though, say, what can I do about it? And, and you hear that the chorus always says, well, run for the state house. And then they find out that the state house doesn't pay. There aren't a lot of black and brown people out there that can afford to take the job that takes them away from their their day to day job because most black and brown families have two jobs. So they go to the state house and it pays them, what, a thousand dollars a month uh, to go and redistrict the, the line. So we're almost caught in a conundrum. We know what the problem is, but the solution doesn't work either. Well, when, well first, I think you have to start with where who can make the real change here, which is on the federal level. The only, per, only entity that can protect these black people in these states is the federal government. They have to step in and pass legislation that prevents this, the white uh, Republicans in these states from doing it, and that is who is doing it. If they do not do that, you are, in fact, trapped. That is why it is so important for the Biden administration to lean in on this issue of voter of protection of voters and voter suppression. And we have been talking about this now since the last election. And unfortunately, we are talking about it now coming out of this election. And we will be talking about that again tomorrow.